I said this before, things start in Britain, they tend to come across uh, the Atlantic. In Britain, riots have taken place against Muslims after a series of attacks on, on, on white boys and rapes of girls by Islamic gangs. You're going to hear Asian gangs, that's a euphemism. When you read that in the press, Asian gangs know what is being referred to. And the great Robert Spencer of Jihad Watch is here to explain this and other issues. Robert, th this is extremely important. Now, it, it's terrible because there are innocent Muslim people who are also suffering here. But there, in Rochdale, Greater Manchester, 200 uh, white kids, uh, a mob really, but very angry. But you can understand their anger. Oh, absolutely, Michael. I mean, look. The problem is, is that the uh, Islamic supremacist groups, you know, Anjum Chowdhury's group, the uh, Sharia for Britain and so on, al Muhajirun, before that, Omar Bakri and all these people, they have uh, been creating a situation that's very tense in Britain with people being afraid to display their patriotism openly, people being afraid to go and greet soldiers returning home from Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, they've created a climate of intimidation and violence. And so uh, until the authorities are willing to step in and rein those groups in in any real and effective way, then uh, the situation is going to continue to deteriorate. Yes. Now, just to give some, some background, and again, most people wouldn't pay much attention to what is happening in the UK, but it's important to do so. Uh, that there were a, a series, a succession of, of young men. Just the other day, a 17-year-old going to buy some candy. He was badly, badly beaten up by uh, a gang of young Muslims. And I would emphasize this. When you hear Asian gang and people say, well, it could have been non-Muslim, this is incredibly naive. This doesn't mean Hindu or, 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 or Buddhist. or It doesn't mean people from Thailand. or, or, or this, this is the inner city Muslim kids who are doing this. Also, older yes, Muslims who are, who are grooming young girls to be prostitutes. Now, this is not unique or isolated. There are now dozens and dozens of such cases. There's so many of these cases, Michael, of uh, these Asian so-called gangs uh, uh, k kidnapping or luring uh, young non-Muslim girls into uh, these, uh, this, what's essentially prostitution and uh, forced sexual slavery. And, you know, it's very unpleasant. People don't like to talk about this, but we have to remember that just as recently as May 2011, there was an Egyptian Muslim sheikh who was prominent enough to be featured on Egyptian television and a Kuwaiti politician, a so-called feminist, who was a candidate for the Kuwaiti parliament, who both independently and separately, but around the same time, came out and explained that sex slavery was perfectly permissible under Islamic law, that Muhammad had practiced it, the Quran sanctioned it, and it was something that Muslims should actually encourage and practice because it helped to encourage the morality of their young men by helping them maintain stable marriages while having this extra outlet on the side. Now this was pr presented in all seriousness. There were no dissenting voices. No one has stood up in the Islamic world and said, wait a minute, that's monstrous. What are you talking about doing? And then when we see these stories coming out of Britain, so many stories of these, uh, these so-called Asian sex slavery gangs, I think that there is a very real connection. They look upon non-Muslim women as uh, essentially objects that they can use in this way. Mm -hmm. and, and once more, th there will be all sorts of people in Canada who will say, well, this is just extremism and, and you don't understand. Spend some time in an inner city in, in Manchester, Nottingham, parts of Birmingham, parts of East London. Uh, you will see the, 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 the racist comments made by young Muslims. Um, women I mean, just will not go into certain areas. Uh, another story I want to talk about here, Robert, I'm not sure how familiar you are with this, but this is a, a man uh, in his, uh, I'm getting on in age, he'd, he'd been a, a war hero, he'd been in the British Army, he now lives in Portugal. He created a, a quite famous cartoon, a, a kid's cartoon, a TV series in Britain. He went through uh, customs, immigration, at the airport, and there was a, a heavily covered woman who went in before him, and uh, then he, and she was barely stopped. He went through and he was searched, and he said, oh, if I'd been covering my face, uh, I wonder what would have happened. He was stopped by security. A, a Muslim security guard had complained. He was stopped. He was questioned for an hour uh, by the police, security officials. Uh, they demanded he apologize. They insulted him. This, this, is, this is beyond belief. It is. It is, Michael. It, it's, I mean, you have to wonder, is airport security now uh, apparently Orwellian, politically correct security, that uh, we cannot express incorrect opinions anymore going through... Uh, airport security or will be stopped and questioned. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact is that it's illegal for uh, anybody with face covered 
to go through airport security without uncovering his or her face. And so he remarked on this woman who passed through without being made to uncover her face in violation of what are stated procedures and supposed to be procedures that are supposed to be followed by airport security. He makes a wry comment and uh, that he would be hauled away this way shows how rapidly our situation has deteriorated in the so-called free world or the free as yet world. Mm -hmm. uh, we have now a situation where uh, it is increasingly difficult and we are under increasing pressure if we tell the truth about Islamic supremacism, about Islamic uh, separationism and this unwillingness to follow Western laws, mores and customs on the part of Muslim individuals uh, and so instead of calling upon them to follow our laws and practices we have our uh, legal officials and poli police and uh, these air security officials uh, forcing non-Muslims to accommodate, to change the way that we practice, uh, we do our business and how we practice airport security in this case or how we uh, maintain our uh, business practices, educational institutions and so on in other contexts. And then people who raise a voice like this creator of Fireman Sam, mm -hmm. he, uh, they're the ones who are victimized. And uh, it shows that, you know, freedom of speech goes and then tyranny follows. Yeah. Freedom of speech is our fundamental protection against tyranny. And yeah. so uh, this is actually, you know, it seems like a minor incident, but it has very grave implications. Well, it does, because this Feynman Sam, it was, it was a, a kid's series on TV. This is a man who'd fought uh, for the British Army. He was a law-abiding man, a decent man, a highly respected man. He, would, he didn't mention Islam or race or religion. He merely said that the woman in front of him completely covered, who wasn't stopped, and he was stopped. I wondered if I, if I'd been dressed like that, what would have happened? For an ad, and it was a, it was a Muslim security guard who said, "I'm offended by that." And then the police are brought in. The powers of arrest are implied. And for an hour, this man is is ritually humiliated, and his two daughters are waiting for him. It's incredible. Look, Robert, I mean, now, well, now offending someone is an offen is an arrestable offence. Offending a Muslim yeah. is an arrestable offence in Britain. Yeah. Oh, in Canada. For some time, we're going to have you. But we'll have you back on the show on a regular basis. It's so important that we don't expose this. Thank you, as always, my friend. Thank you, Michael.